and welcome to our Thursday midweek service. Uh, we appreciate you all joining us and uh, uh, commenting and following along and sharing our videos. Uh, it means a lot to us. We, we say that each week, but it really does. Um, we're continuing on. Pastor Walt's here and myself <laughs> are continuing on with his new, um, hopefully, book called The Helmet in the um, Prince of the Power of the Air chapter. Right. Um, so we'll start with prayer and then we'll get started. Uh, thank you, Father God, for this uh, this revelation that you've given our pastor. We just thank you, Father God, that he uh, is such a, a great example to follow and that he pours so much into each and every one of us, Father God. We just ask um, that you'll bless him, Father God, that you'll bless him for the time he spends in the word for us, Father God, and that you'll bless all those who hear the message that you've given him, uh, that it will pierce the hearts and help them to do what you want them to do, Father God, for their own benefit. And we just give you all glory and all honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this teaching is uh, is part of a teaching called The Helmet, as Debbie uh, mentioned. It's uh, the idea of being able to uh, protect your thought life, guard your thought life. Uh, we're now uh, going to do a little bit of rewind, I guess you can call it. We're going to start with a section that we uh, left off with last week, and that is uh, that there was at least three categories of defective thinking. And so why don't we just go ahead and start with that. Okay, I'll read. Uh, there are those that have been conditioned habitually think incorrectly, void of scriptural influence, and have given themselves over to the inclinations of the flesh, which the scripture calls a fleshly mind, or minding the things of the flesh. The fleshly mind is the devil's playground. Even for the Christian, it's important to understand that the scriptures we have been using are directed toward the believer. Now, when we talk about the devil's playground, we kind of picture the devil as the bully. Mm -hmm. um, because a fleshly mind is, a, is obviously a mindset that's set in... Um, in the world system, it, it 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 meditates, it contemplates, it leans towards bad behavior that projected through uh, the world system. Um, so, uh, so that's what we mean by when we say the devil's playground. And it, it it's uh, important to understand that even the Christian can get, can get caught up in this type of thinking. Uh, because understand, God has given you a free will, and so that free will extends to your thought life. <laughs> Obviously, uh, uh, you can feel the way you want to feel. You can think the way you want to think. You can do what you want to do. That's the whole concept of a free will. Uh, but the purpose of a free will is so that you can uh, you can uh, serve God, love God, adore God out of your own free will. And that was the purpose of the free will. Uh, so God wanted to give everyone a choice to either choose him or choose a different direction. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about free will, we're talking about uh, a will uh, that, that ideally is supposed to be someone that favors God, loves God, that's the concept of a free will, but now it doesn't have to go in that direction, obviously. That's, it. that's good. That's interesting that um, you say that because earlier today as I was um, kind of just pondering the scriptures, um, cleaning the house, <laughs> uh, I was reminded of a time in counseling where I had a thought that really uh, plagued me, and I thought that thought made me just a horrible person. And you told me that that thought wasn't me, but a temptation. And I didn't have to yield to that. And I started to think about that, how um, you'll be presented with thoughts that sometimes people just automatically thinks, think belong to them. Thoughts or came, that tempt you. Yeah, and that they came from their own mind. But uh, they, they are not yours unless you begin to entertain them. Right. And accept them as yours. That's good. And so... Um, I was reminded of that time how I was able to separate that thought from who I was mm -hmm. and not accept it as me. But that thought came from, like you said, the devil's playground. Yeah. You know, we're just we're just walking around in this world. And he he's the god of this world. So yeah. 
anyone that chooses to uh, to live in that to live in the world is going to is going to be subject to this bully, mm -hmm. as we're calling him. Now we're just using the play in words, obviously, but mm -hmm. but he will manipulate your thoughts and he will control your life through your thoughts and your emotions. That's good. And, and like on a playground, you don't have to play the bully's game. No. You go do your own thing. You, go do your own <laughs> you don't thing. have to. You don't <laughs> have to accept what what the devil's trying to, to present to you. That's right. Or entertain them even, because that's that's the that mm -hmm. that's the first dangerous step. Mm -hmm. in in his plan for your life is to entertain what he's mm -hmm. trying to present to you. Well, he, uh, uh, <laughs> since we're using this allegory of a bully, mm -hmm. he kind of, uh, he kind of does things through manipulation. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he manipulates, uh, he operates through fear. Uh, he instills fear and, and he manipulates people that way. That's how he, he controls them. But if someone was to stand up against him, then that bully wouldn't be so tough. That's right. You know, um, anyways, let's continue. That's good. Okay, so Romans chapter 8, verses uh, 5 through 7 in the Amplified Classic. For those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires, set their minds on and purpose those things which gratify the flesh, because you're talking about the fleshly mind. Right. But those who are according to the Spirit and are controlled by the desires of the Spirit, set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. Now the mind of the flesh, flesh which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, is death death that comprises all the miseries arising from sin both here and hereafter but the mind of the holy spirit is life and soul peace both now and forever i like how it points out that it's now <laughs> and yeah, forever and forever so notice what it says about the mind of the flesh it's which is sense and reason without the holy spirit and of course that leads to death mm -hmm. um, that's comprised of all the miseries that are arising from from the same nature. Right. Uh, so uh, it's just that mentality uh, that authorizes a person in this world to act a certain way, uh, largely because they're in agreement with those feelings and those thoughts. So that's where things like jealousy comes from. Pride is a big one mm -hmm. that comes into play. Uh, uh, so, you know, well, a person that's prideful, is, pride is probably one of the worst enemies a Christian can have from this, in this particular area because pride will always oppose God, always. Because pride is, pride is just simply elevating yourself above others mm -hmm. uh, and elevating yourself above God. So um, you know better, you know, and that's the whole concept. Uh, anyways, uh, let's read uh, another scripture. We left out verse 7. Did we? Okay, yeah, let's read that it. is because the mind of the flesh with its carnal thoughts and purposes is hostile to God for it does not submit itself to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. It cannot. Pride. Anyways. So you, you're talking about those who yield to deceptive devils and that's in Colossians 2.18. Let no man beguile you of your, of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels intruding into those things which he hath not seen vainly puffed up that is to inflate to exaggerate by his fleshly mind uh, well let's read some more of this because i think the notes kind of explain it a lot better than, than i probably could right now it is your notes colossians 2 18 is in reference to the so-called knowledge of the gnostics that claim to have exclusive access to angelic hosts that would reveal the will and direction of God through visions and dreams. These revelations that they claimed to have often went against Holy Scripture and were fabrications of, flesh, of a fleshly mind designed to discredit the Apostle Paul and lead people off to themselves. Now, when you study history, you run into the Gnostics a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not mentioned, uh, they weren't called Gnostics back then. That's just a name that was given them because they were people that claimed to have uh, divine knowledge that came through angels and dreams and God would speak to them and then in, in, in turn they would direct or their purpose was to direct the people through those but they all but what they did is they undermined the apostles right they, and they not only the apostles but the word of God itself mm -hmm. and so that's how the Gnostics came about so they, the Gnostics were given that name much later mm -hmm. than but in church history that's what they were known as the Gnostics 
it, Gnostics is, is, uh, comes from the Greek word gnosko, which means knowledge. Mm, okay. So you, you say they were very prevalent or widespread throughout church history. Peter, Peter also had trouble with them. Their goal was always marred or impaired with gaining popularity and control. Remember, Paul called them vainly puffed up. Sensing that he was close to departing and to be with the Lord, Peter writes in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 through 20, and um, start verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now, this, what we're about to read is, Peter is referring to uh, the Mount, what the Bible calls the Mount of Transfiguration, where Jesus was transformed into mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. So who, who, Jesus was seen for who he was, and when they seen him, he, he just sh he, his whole body just became light. Mm. And it was so bright that it shined through his clothes and made his clothes white. Wow. White as light. And so that's what we're going to read. This is what Peter witnessed on the Mount of Transfiguration. Remember when he seen uh, Moses right. and... Right, uh, standing with him. And Elijah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Peter takes his view of the Gnostics a step further by revealing that the revelations were cunningly devised fables. From a Greek perspective that would better translate as a sinister made-up falsehood, an erroneous fairy tale, pure fiction conjured up in their imagination. Wow. Remember, <laughs> Peter said that they were eyewitnesses of his majesty, which means they visibly saw the splendor of his divine person or majesty. So picking up in verse 17, it says, For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until they, the dawn, until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Do we read the note? Sure. Peter was referring to the Mount of Transfiguration, where Jesus transformed into light, the visible splendor of divine majesty. Um, there's also a reference to Matthew 17, 1 through 6. Now, this is where Peter's making reference to. You'll find that reference in Matthew 17, verses 1 through 6, where God spoke and said, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased they all heard it Peter James and John they were up in the Mount of Transfiguration mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with uh, Jesus when all this took place okay transfigured or transformed means to be changed to change into another form a form that reveals who he really was this was where he was transformed changed into light revealing his inner being it was so overwhelmingly powerful that his face and clothes radiated white as light this is where they saw Moses and Elijah, and Jesus was transfigured, and his face did shine as the sun, and his clothes turned white as light. Added insight reveals that Moses represented the law, and Elijah represented the prophets. It's interesting. Because Peter makes reference to the prophets. That's mm -hmm. why I added that. That's interesting. Even though they saw all of this, Peter states in verse 19 that they had a more sure word of prophecy, referring to the writing of the prophets, which is holy scripture. By this we know that no revelation, vision, or dream that comes from God will ever nullify or exclude Holy Scripture, but rather verify their authenticity. The fleshly mind, as we have seen in Romans 8, 5 through 8, and Colossians 2, 18, can also lean towards inherent qualities of the sin nature that haven't been dealt with, such as pride, selfishness, and fear, and ignore or deny any truth that the Scripture might bring. Wow. <laughs> That's powerful, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, I couldn't say it better. I mean, <laughs> you did say it. <laughs> I mean, that's a good way of saying it. <laughs> <laughs> well, praise God for His <laughs> divine revelation. Mm -hmm. There are those, okay, so this is the next type. There are those that are from time to time or are constantly being swayed or harassed by suggestive and influential thoughts and reasonings. So, these are, in most cases, spiritually produced by demonic spirits centered on loss, offense, fears, jealousy, resentments, and frustrations that are floating around in the air or atmosphere in the cosmos. 
The influence of the world system has a lot to do with a person's perception, which is the ability to see, hear, or become aware of something through the senses, which triggers a person's, person's emotion. This is not always an honest assessment. Whether it is an honest assessment or not, is our response one that would be pleasing to the Lord? Remember, these demonic spirits like to play both sides, one against the other. In other words, don't let others pull you off into worldly behavior, which is the flesh. And sometimes we have to learn to politely walk or run away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I thought I'd add that because some people can be really, they can get, the flesh can get really bad, mm -hmm. you know, from just an argument, screaming and yelling to violent. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you just have to realize it's time to walk away or run away or get away or whatever it is. Uh, because because these things, these thoughts are geared towards something. They want to divide. They want to kill uh, relationships. They want to destroy your health. Uh, whatever, whatever the thoughts are suggesting to you, know and understand their purpose is to destroy you. Mm -hmm. uh, there, it, whether it's a relationship, whether it's your health, whether it's your finances, they have one goal. Uh, collectively, all these forces, these demonic forces, have one goal, and that is to destroy you. They have no, uh, there is no life in them. Mm -hmm. They just produce death. That's all they do. That's good. I like how you say run away. It reminds me of Joseph, right? When he was presented with the right, right. Potiphar's wife, trying and to tempt him. Right, and, and he, he ran away. Ran away. If he, <laughs> if he hadn't, if he had given in to the flesh, mm -hmm. um, which would have been easy to do, because that's a lot of, you see a lot of times, people who have done that, even in present day times, <laughs> people give in to the flesh and they have, um, do things they shouldn't do. But he would have been destroyed. He wouldn't have been able to do what God had set for him to do. And, uh, well, yeah, he, God would have had to find another way. Mm -hmm. But uh, it could have helped Samson, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, no is not a bad word. Right. Uh, <laughs> even even, even in, a, in a smaller scale, knowing your own thought life for things that... Um, yeah. Well, in self-image. Right. You know, people have a lot of thoughts about how they feel about themselves. They, they feel... We have all these... We've got so many things talking to us, whether it's the television, uh, whether it's the internet or whatever it might be. All these images and things are projecting to us who we ought to be when we need to let the Bible tell us who we are. Right. So that we'd be more at freedom, mm -hmm. be more free, uh, and be a lot happier with, mm -hmm. with ourselves. Uh, but uh, That's good. So they, it gets very, very broad. But like that I think um, sometimes it pays to be less confrontational especially when it comes to dealing with other people's flesh yes well that's where you walk away yeah uh, confrontation um, uh, confrontation is really not not needed uh, when it comes to arguments and things like that there's no reason for it really it's you know you, just, you we have to understand that people are going to think the way they think they're going to do the, the things they do, and there's nothing we can do but walk away. Like you know, so unless someone's trying to, you know, harm you physically, then that's the only uh, reason what, what, that the Bible would give you uh, some kind of license to protect and defend yourself. Mm -hmm. But that's a different teaching altogether. Yeah, it's interesting. In pre-marriage counseling, you, um, you talked to us about not, about how flesh will breed corruption. Flesh will, yes, flesh so, produces flesh. More flesh, yeah, that's the word. And so, and so you, you would talk about how if you choose to respond in the flesh, then you're going to get more flesh back at you. And it just creates this whole big mm -hmm. volcano of, a, of eruption of emotion, and, and it just doesn't help you. <laughs> Once you step into the flesh and start yielding to its thoughts and its feelings and emotions, the, the feelings and emotions that it produces, mm -hmm. once you step into that, you step into an arena where God's not working. Mm -hmm. The only thing working there is the devil. Mm -hmm. So what you've done is you've, you've ignited the flesh in the other person. Right. And if the other person is no stronger than you are, then you have a battle on your hands. Right. Uh, 
so as Christians, we need to be strong enough to walk away. Yeah. That's good. You know, and so if we can do that, we can have more success because, because uh, one of the things I always tell people, you must stay blameless. If you want God to function or, or, or to give you the victory in any situation, no matter how bad it looks, you have to stay blameless mm -hmm. because that's, that's the one that God's going to protect. Even if, you're, even if you're at odds with another Christian and they're making fun of you or they're talking bad about you, you stay blameless mm -hmm. because that's, th that gives God license to work on your behalf because you're not engaging in the flesh. That's good. So if you decide to engage in the flesh, uh, then you know, you're not giving God much to choose from. He's going to have to go with those that are living right before him. Yeah. And because he is a just God. Mm -hmm. Anyways, let's yeah, continue. I like that. So, um, and finally, there are those where their mind has been possessed by devils, which means that their thought life has been completely taken over, tortured and controlled by demon entities, such as the man mentioned in Mark 5.15. All these different categories can, can be helped or delivered by the word and the power of the Holy Ghost. If the believer chooses to take authority over these harassing thoughts and devils by resisting and refusing to allow these thoughts access to their thought life. Like you've been talking about. Right. Away. <laughs> um, then there are those that have chosen to gratify the flesh and remain enslaved to the desires and longings of the sin nature through the tendencies and urges of the body and the feelings produced by them rather than being submitted to God. So, um, oh, I meant to check with you about this scripture. I think this is the right one. 2 Timothy 4.10 For Demoth hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Uh, I can't read that word. Uh, Crescens? That's another person, right? To Galatia. Uh, yes. Titus mm -hmm. to Damal. Uh, Dem yeah, another place. <laughs> That's fine. I can't pronounce it that well either. I, it's weird. <laughs> okay. So here in Second Timothy 2, uh, 4, 10, it is talking about Demas that has forsaken him. He abandoned him. Really, the word forsaken means abandon him. Mm -hmm. to, to leave him with all the work and mm -hmm. to just just run off, you know, and not be considered considerate of what all the the Apostle Paul had to do there. He just ran off, and he did it because he he loved this present day world. Um, so uh, uh, that tells us that that uh, some do have. We all have a choice. We have mm -hmm. a free will, mm -hmm. and Demas is one of those that's mentioned a few times in scriptures as one of Paul's. Uh, persons that, that travels with Paul and helps Paul. Obviously, he had to be a, port, a person of importance because he's mentioned. Right. You know, at least twice. This is the third time he's mentioned. In a negative way. And this, this third time is a negative way. So he uh, 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 developed a fondness for the world, a love mm -hmm. for the world, and he, and he departed. That's so, interesting. So that tells us that there are those people that choose to gratify their flesh. Uh, let's read uh, James. It's interesting because that's this age that we're in, the church age that we're in. Right. And so even though they're in the Bible, like they're in the same type of mm -hmm. environment that we're in and we're presented with those same choices. Right. For the Very work, good. You know, God's work or mm -hmm. the world. That's, that's, <laughs> that's good. I'm sorry. I just no, thought it was interesting because I think a lot of people... apologize for good, 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 good. <laughs> I think people can tend to, to separate themselves from these situations and things. Mm -hmm. it, it just goes to show that no one's exempt from the devil's deceptions. And if you, everyone has to watch their thought line, everyone, or you just flat out think wrong. And that is the most dangerous thing that can happen. When you're thinking wrong, that's, wh that's where the enemy wants you. Whether it's, whether it's the, the thoughts are produced from the flesh and the flesh only, the sin nature, or whether they're, they're demonically influenced and suggested. Mm -hmm. uh, thinking wrong is, is the whole concept of the world system. They want you to think wrong. Now, there's other uh, areas, there's other demons and devils that, because we talked about, I think it was last week, 
that they are responsible for sicknesses and diseases and things like that. We're not going to get into that in this particular teaching mm -hmm. because I think the source of everything, the victory lies in your thought life. That's good. And in your faith because, because the, the devil is always attacking your mind because he, what he wants is you to abandon your faith and he'll get you to do that through your thought life. Mm -hmm. He'll just get you, he'll affect you emotionally, mentally, he'll bombard you until you just give up. Free will, just quit. And you start worrying, getting in your anxiety, and when you're there, he's got you. That's mm -hmm. where he wants you. Because that is where faith is not. Mm -hmm. Where anxiety is, faith does not dwell. That's good. So, uh, and faith is what overcomes the world. Amen. 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 God is so good. Uh, so James chapter 4, verses 7 and 8 in the New Amplified says, So submit to the authority of God, resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. Come close to God with a, a contrite, which is broken remorse and repentant heart, and he will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your unfaithful hearts, you double-minded people. Now, obviously, again, he's talking to Christians. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And he's telling them that they're living, they're not living right. Right. And he, he called them, you know, called them sinners. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he tells them, purify your unfaithful hearts. And then he calls them double-minded. Mm -hmm. So this, again, is proof that people uh, will choose, by choice, to, to, to gratify the flesh. Mm -hmm and lean towards these desires and wants, the, the cravings of the sin nature, which we know, which James also calls uh, death. Mm -hmm. It produces death. Uh, anyway, God is so good. Amen. So Co if you continue, is, notice yeah. that the scriptures clearly indict. In, indict the devil for influencing the moral and spiritual decay of the believer. Yet we can't help but see that the believer has by choice developed a friendship or fondness with the world or cosmos. Uh, James 4 verse 4 says, um, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Now, James 4 4 is obviously be just before mm -hmm. James 4 7, which it says, Submit to God, resist, resist the devil, the and he will flee yeah. from you. Mm -hmm. Uh, so resist and keep on resisting and he will run from you. The Beck translation reads, resist the devil and he will run away from you. The actual Greek reads, stand in fierce opposition against the adversary in slander. He will run from you in terror. That's good. In all of these categories, the person struggling with their thoughts must want change before they can receive help or deliverance. You can't go against their will. They will have to choose. First John 4, 4.4 4 clearly says that we have overcome them because greater is he that is in us, which is the Holy Spirit, than he which is the devil that is in the world, or cosmos. We are using this verse in a general sense. The battle for supremacy continues in the mind and emotions of the believer to get them to abandon their faith in God and lean more towards the behaviors of the world and a natural life without God's intervention. A life with God and it takes the natural operations of things out of our lives and replaces it with a supernatural life of God's miraculous and div divine intervention. God is so good. Now, First uh, John four four, uh, and you have overcome those children because good is even is in you than even is in the world. That in context is is um, is talking about the Antichrist, but it, it is a general term that applies in our lives in every situation. Mm -hmm. So that's why I mentioned we're using this as a general, in a general sense, uh, because it does have a context. Everything happens in context, context. But, but there's certain scriptures that can apply to every area of your life mm -hmm. because the Holy Ghost does live in you. Mm -hmm. So then he obviously is uh, the one that overcomes right. or helps you to overcome. Right. So that's just a general truth. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 through 5, we'll start in verse 4. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. Notice the phrase, pulling down of strongholds, holds the... I'm sorry, let me start that over. Notice the phrase, pulling down of strongholds, 
The term pulling down means to demolish, to destroy, and the term strongholds means, to, means a castle or fortress built for guarding and protection of the residents of a kingdom. Here it is being used to guard and protect the evil behavior behind immoral imaginations, thoughts, and reasonings. A stronghold or fortress is a way of thinking that protects a person's uh, mental disposition inter intermingled with inherent qualities like pride and selfishness and so on that support a person's character or their behavior. Those that struggle with pride, selfishness, and fearful thinking reason differently than those that are prideless, selfless, and courageous. There are many things that can be considered a fortress that protects and guards worldly behavior produced by things like pride, selfishness, lust, even fear and anxiety. Again, these are fortresses interwoven within a person's thoughts and sense of reason. The Apostle Paul is revealing that we have been weaponized to pull these fortresses down to demolish them. Not only the fortresses, but the inner feelings and emotions that are being protected by them. These thoughts, imaginations, and reasonings are designed to separate us from the many blessings of God and to enslave us to serve the world system and all of its corruption. So verse 5 says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The Amplified Classic translates the word imaginations as arguments and theories and reasonings. And the New Amplified says, we are destroying sophisticated arguments in every exalted and proud thing that self sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. Our lexicons give us the meaning of the word imagination as thoughts, conceit, and reasonings that are hostile to the Christian's way of life. The phrase, casting down imaginations in every high thing, is in reference to the pulling down of strongholds that exalts or makes itself superior to the knowledge of God. Wow. I read a lot. Sorry. No, that's good. Uh, I'm glad you got that out because that's so important. That passage of scripture is mm -hmm. so important. So the what what happens really is that is that uh, uh, our thoughts will protect certain behaviors and reasonings, and uh, our thoughts and reasonings will protect certain behaviors that are produced by pride, arrogance, jealousies, mm -hmm. selfishness. Uh, all these type of things and so they're well protected by your thoughts mm -hmm. so the Apostle Paul says pull these thoughts down mm -hmm. uh, so that so that you can overcome these these inherent qualities that have been um, that have been in us or been instilled in us through the old sin nature because mm -hmm. we're new creatures in Christ Jesus but yet we yet because we do have a choice we can choose to protect some of these things and allow those things to govern our lives. Mm -hmm. Well, pe people that do that are not as happy, and they make people around them miserable. Mm -hmm. And so, um, anyways, uh, the concept is, is you have been empowered to pull down these thoughts that protect all this junk, this pride, these arrogancies, um, all these things, uh, I mean, you could even go as far as murder. Everything that uh, that is comprised within this fortress, the thoughts will protect. We we call it justification. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but the, the justification is really uh, a bunch of thoughts that permit you to do what you're doing mm -hmm. and dismiss the word of God. Mm -hmm. and well, so, I have the right. <laughs> I have the right, and yeah, uh, no one's going to treat me like that. Uh, this is. You know, uh, I'm the breadwinner around here. Uh, there's just all kinds of things that kind of just, you know, cause you not to function like God created you to function, mm -hmm. or at least uh, want you to function so that He can continue to prosper you in a way that you uh, have no idea how much God wants to move in your life. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times He can't because we won't allow change. Mm -hmm. And we have to be able to deal with our mind. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're struggling with your finances, whether you're struggling with your with your uh, health, whether you're struggling with your relationships. Uh, all these things have different problems that can be addressing them, but yet the mind is the source to all of these things. Mm -hmm. It's through the mind that the devil holds all these areas captive and keeps you in poverty. Mm -hmm. And so or defeated. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, let's show. Let's read some of these scriptures because uh, I'd like to finish this up if I could, because this is 
This is what we need to know that Jesus has already done. Mm -hmm. So let's continue. Okay. Oh, sorry. First John um, chapter 2, verses 15 through 16 in the New Amplified. Do not love the world or cosmos of, of sin that opposes God and his precepts, nor the things that are in the world, the cosmos. If anyone loves the world, cosmos, <laughs> the love of the Father is not in him. Um, so note, used... Oh, never mind. <laughs> Don't need to read that. No. In the phrase, do not love the world of sin, the Greek word for love is agapo, and it means to love or be found of entertaining sin. It is also found in... Um, the next phrase, if anyone loves, which means, which is the word agapo, the world. Agapo can be a very deep love, but it can also be a misdirected or misguided love that in context is pulled or leans towards the behavior found in the world. In the last phrase, we find the Greek word agape, and it reads, the love of God is not in him, which is agape. Agape is a sacrificial love, a selfless love. It is offered to those who would benefit from believing in his own son. I'm sorry, that would benefit. Uh, agape is a sacrificial love, a selfless love that is offered to those who would benefit from believing in his son's death, burial, and resurrection. Um, so verse 16 says, For all that is in the world, which is the cosmos, the lust and sensual cravings, of the flesh and the lust and longing of the eyes and the boastful pride of life, pretentious confidence in one's resources or in the stability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father, but are from the world, which is the cosmos. We must remember that we are weaponized, given the tools and authority to destroy these mental fortresses that protect and guard worldly behaviors, these evil imaginations, thoughts, reasonings, arguments, and theories, and the behavior they protect. We are to take these thoughts imaginations and reasonings into, into captivity. The term bringing into captivity is all one Greek word and it means to, to um, take captive, to take captive, to take control of, to take into custody, to seize by legal authority. The idea is to conquer, sorry did you want to say something? No, no, go ahead, I'm, <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Okay, the idea is to conquer and capture the disposition of one's own mind, the inherent qualities of mind and character and bring it into captivity, forcing it into obedience or submission. We have been authorized to resist the devil. We have been empowered to cast down imaginations and reasonings. The devil's influential and deceptive power comes through the power of suggestion and is launched against the mind by the prince of the power of the air and those demonic spirits under his command, yet they hold no real power of any kind over the believer. Wow. Boy, there's so much here. I don't even know. I wanted to end this teaching tonight, but I don't know if we'll be able to. You have a couple pages left. Yeah. Did you want me to try and read it real quick? Uh, uh, I don't want to rush through it, but. <laughs> Let's go a little bit further if it's okay with our director, okay. which is your husband over here. He's <laughs> going on. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good man. Who told you you couldn't overcome? That's for the person who thinks they can't overcome. That's right. <laughs> who told you you couldn't overcome? Where did that idea or thought come from? It certainly did not come from God. He gave you a sound biblical mind as well as authorized you to deal with the devil. He has equipped you with the helmet of salvation to protect your mind, thoughts, and reasonings. So keep your mind attached to his promises, mercy, faithfulness, goodness, love, and on his ability and willingness to deliver you. Our Savior and Lord Jesus has overcome the world and deprived it of the power to hurt us so that we could live in perfect peace and confidence no matter what we experience in the world. No, it has no staying power. John 16, 33 in the Amplified Classic says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. But be, a good, be of good cheer Take courage, be confident, certain, undaunted, for I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Amen. Praise God, thank you, Lord <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so we don't realize that we have, we have been given everything we need mm -hmm. to walk in victory. Right. And victory is already ours. We, you know, uh, it, it's just crazy to allow the devil to walk all over us and to trample all over our thoughts when we know that 
those thoughts are not supposed to be there. Right. And so by entertaining those thoughts, he takes us into captivity. Uh, but, but at any time, no matter how far down the road you are in, as a captive, no matter how long you've been held captive, you can always break free mm -hmm. by just doing the word. Amen. Just by speaking your faith and breaking free and change the way you think. And because the devil will keep you paralyzed. He'll say, you can't do this. Well, uh, I've seen so many people uh, that they're, they're, they're just lying dormant, immobile. And they're wondering why life is so miserable mm -hmm. when all they have to do is start doing the word. Mm -hmm. Start doing what God told them to do one day at a time, one step at a time, and watch God's delivering power come Amen. over their life. Just don't. If you're sick and, and you, you maybe you hurt yourself or you injured yourself or something physically, then get, get some kind of therapy going. But don't sit there. And allow yourself to remain crippled. Right. Uh, do something. Uh, and even if you are in a wheelchair, you can still believe God. Do something uh, that will change your life. Because God wants to give you the victory. He wants to bring a healing and a cure to you. It's just how much can we believe? Mm -hmm. Well, your belief system is going to be affected by how much word you have. You need to get in the Word of God until you're totally convinced that the devil is a liar and that God is your deliverer, no matter how bad your situation is. Amen. You just got to, you can't give up. You just can't. And, and if, you, if you give up in your mind, then he'll stop you in every area of your life. Mm -hmm. Because if he can capture one area, then rest assured he's going to capture another area. Uh, if he can tell you you can't do this, you can't do that, the next thing you know, he's going to try to go after your friendships, your relationships, your job, or whatever it is. He's going to beat you down little bit by little bit. He's in it for the long haul. Mm -hmm. But so are we. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And we're not going to give up. And we're assured that when Jesus comes back for the church, we will be in the victor's seat. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So take that, devil. <laughs> this is counseling gold. Anyone who has ever struggled with their thoughts or um, the way they even perceive themselves or struggling with how to, um, uh, what's the word I would always use? Uh, process. Processing. Struggling with how to process things. Mm -hmm. This is counseling gold. You can listen to this over and over again and know that Pastor Walter is talking directly to you. <laughs> Whenever I would struggle with how to process something, I would go, go to Pastor Walter and I'd say, <laughs> Pastor, I can't process this correctly. I'm struggling with it. It's beating me up. Can you help me figure out? And I sometimes wouldn't even tell him what I was doing. <laughs> I would just go and I would sit there. I wouldn't even have to tell him what I was struggling with. I would just listen to what he had to say. And by the time I left, I would feel better. And there are times now where I don't have to go to him for help anymore because I'll just apply what he's taught me. You can do the same. Well, glory be to God. <laughs> he's talking about the anointing uh, and a process of growing and developing. And as you grow and develop, uh, then that anointing that is in you, because the Holy Ghost is in you, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, he will comfort you. He will help you to overcome. What she's talking about is growing and developing in the things of God. Yes. And once she got used to how the Holy Ghost talks, then she's able to help herself more and more and more. <laughs> Amen. So we can never take credit for what God is doing. Never forget that. Uh, people will, people will uh, have a lot of love and respect for you. And that's okay. Just don't ever let it go to your head. Because it's not really you. Amen. Glory be to God. All glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So let's go on. Okay, almost <laughs> Uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18 in the New Amplified, it says, For our mon momentary light distress, this passing trouble, is producing for us an eternal weight of glory, a fullness beyond all measure, surpassing all comparisons, a transcendent splendor, and an effortless blessedness. So we look not at the things which are seen, 
but at the things which are unseen. For the things which are visible are temporal, just brief and fleeting, but the things which are invisible are ever everlasting and imperishable. Protect your mind and sense of reasoning. Refuse to think incorrectly. Be a sound thinker, one that agrees with the word of God and has an understanding of eternal truth and its holding power. Refuse to give them refuse to give yourself over to temporal truth, knowing that temporal truth is only temporary and has no staying or holding power. Why would one surrender to a battle that has already been won for them? Stay the course, keep your mind and sense of reasoning protected, and you will see that your victory has already been won. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Uh, John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. Let's read that and then we'll call it a night. Okay, in the Amplified Classic it says, for, for whatever is born of God is victorious over the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, even our faith. That's what you are saying mm -hmm. earlier, our faith. Who is it that is victorious over, that conquers the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, who adheres to, trusts in, and relies on that fact? Why is verse 5 so important? Because it is through Jesus and Him alone, the Son of the living and eternal God, that salvation has come to any person that believes in, adheres to, trusts, and relies on the outcome of the works of the cross, and lives in the conquest of the Messiah, the Son of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 57 and 58, I'll read 57. It says, But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory. Gives gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless all of you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. There's a little bit more, but not much more. Uh, but I think this is the end of this series. So God bless all of you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for staying the extra 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> However it was. But we love you and appreciate you. May you remain healthy. May you remain whole. May God bless everything you do. May, the, may your hands prosper in everything you put your hands to and uh, may you be enriched all the days of your life. Amen. God Amen. Bless.